Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a departure from the freshwater fair. And we're going to be tying a saltwater pattern. This one's called the Black Death. And primarily it's uh, a fly designed for uh, tarpon and it's tied in the Florida Keys style. Um, I'll put a little bit of more information in the notes. You can have a look at that and gives you a bit of the background behind why these flies are tied uh, looking like this. But basically this is a tarpon fly. We're going to be tying this on a f on a saltwater hook, but this is actually the type of fly that I would use for uh, some bass or some pike in fresh waters as well. This is a great fly for uh, overcast dark days and the uh, black and red is kind of a good color for attracting tarpon and it's why it's been popular for quite a few decades. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw for some flies, materials, and some stickers. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. All right, so let's get to it. I'm gonna get a fresh hook in the vise. So we're gonna be using a fairly heavy hook here. This is a Gamakatsu, I think it's a an SC15. And one we're tying today is in a three-aught size. For thread, we're gonna be using uh, some Danville 210 denier uh, flat wax nylon. And here's the hook. It's the yeah, the SC15. You want something that's fairly beefy, uh, fairly heavy hook that's going to be able to handle a big fish. So we're going to start our thread a little bit further back. And just as we go along, I'm just going to explain uh, the reason for having these heads so far back on the fly. So one of the things that uh, we're going to try and achieve is to tie the fly near the back of the hook and that's for a couple different reasons. The first reason being that we don't want the material to foul around the hook and the second was because um, these flies were traditionally snelled onto the line rather than tied with a, a like a surgeon's knot or a loop knot or a Duncan loop or something like that and so they needed that little bit of space up front. So for the tail here, we're going to be using some Nyat, and this is a, uh, a rodent. I believe it's uh, like a South American rodent. It's got some really nice long hair for streamers and for saltwater flies. So we're going to take that length about two lengths of the hook, give or take, and we're just going to tie that down just uh, around where the hook starts to uh, bend a little bit. I'm just going to tie on a few wraps to secure that. I'm going to trim off the excess. And just cut that at a bit of an angle, just so we can have a bit of an easier time when we go to taper that later on. So we're going to add a little bit of flash to this fly. I'm going to use some uh, Mylar flash or some flashaboo. I'm going to take about uh, four strands here. And we're going to tie them along the sides of the tail. And we've got enough length here. We can double this over. We use half on close side and half on the far side without adding any extra material. And we get a little bit uh, extra durability with the fly because it's tied in this way. It's not going to pull out. So we've got a lot of uh, extra durability built into the fly. You just tie those along the side. If they get a little skewed over the top or over the back, you're okay with that. So that looks good. Next, we're going to take in a rabbit strip. This is just a standard zonker strip. You want to look for something that's got a as small a pelt on it as possible. And I like to tie these with the hair side down so that the leather's facing up. 
and uh, you might just want to give that a dry fit before you uh, tie it in just you want to make sure that when you start wrapping this that the hair is going to lie back a little bit if it's standing straight up that's fine you're going to get a little bit extra movement when you're pulsing that through the water so we're going to add a little bit more durability with this fly just add a little bit of uh, hard as nails on those thread wraps and that's really going to grab that uh, leather as we wrap it around the hook shank it's going to kind of add a little bit extra durability to the fly because this one's going to get beat up pretty good with those tarpon and we're just going to do this we're going to palmer it basically so any the same as uh, I would any feather that I'm wrapping up so I'm going to do somewhere around three or four wraps we just want to make sure we pull all that hair back as we go along then we'll make a little bit of a break in the hair and we'll add a couple thread wraps just to secure that now if you wanted to tie this in the traditional way you would probably leave the front part of that hook bare um, we're gonna go ahead and cover that with thread I just like the way it looks so we're gonna clean up the the uh, cut ends here and we're gonna start to build a bit of a taper into our uh, rabbit strip here and that'll help secure it as well and that'll give us a spot where we can place our eyes now I'm going to be painting the eyes on here today but if you've got uh, some flat stick on eyes some tape eyes holographic eyes that sort of thing those work really well you just want to make sure that they're sized appropriately you don't want to have uh, too large of eyes that tend to be a little hard to deal with uh, you'll have to create quite a large thread head in order for them to uh, look appropriate here just brush out that rabbit a little bit see if there's any knots in there and we'll go ahead and we'll just keep wrapping we'll go ahead and we'll cover the front of the shank just want a nice layer of thread on there you don't have to build that up at all and we want to kind of pay attention mostly to uh, where we're going into the collar we want to build up mostly our thread there we'll go ahead and whip finish that and I like to do my whip finish along the length no good reason it's just uh, kind of helps keep that front end uh, fairly uh, even I guess so next we're going to take some bone dry if you don't have bone dry you can use just your regular head cement and in that case you're just going to give it uh, a couple coats just to harden that up and give it lots of time to dry in between coats but with the bone dry we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a full coat onto that thread head and when we've got that coated we'll grab our UV light and we'll give that a quick zap just to make sure everything's cured up and then we'll start placing our eyes so for the eyes on this one we're going to be painting them on as I said I like to use uh, hard as nails nail polish this is just something that I get from the dollar store and I just use a toothpick when I'm applying these I've been told that there's actually a tool I believe Christel Plato he uh, worked with uh, Wasatch tools to create one for streamers a while back uh, I went to see if I could find one for myself but they're currently on back order so hopefully those will come into stock at some point so I'm going to start with a silver eye we just want to make sure you've got a good dab of uh, polish on there or paint you just want to kind of make a nice circular eye if you can if you don't have enough polish on there I just add a little bit more just want to try and get uh, a nice wide um, iris I guess for that um, you can also use yellow or a white on here I've seen 
So we're going to give that a few minutes to dry. And I've got one already prepared, so we'll go ahead and swap flies out of the vise. And then we're going to grab our black polish or black paint. And we're just going to take a thinner toothpick in this case. And we'll use that to make the pupil. So what I do with the toothpicks, I'll usually cut the tip off there just so it's not the fine point, but it's not uh, the full thickness of the shaft of the toothpick, somewhere in between. And you just want to put a little dab on there. Make sure there's no hair in the way. So once that gets set in the polish, it'll be there for good. And if you're satisfied with that, looks good. If you're not happy with it, you can always go ahead and wipe that off before it dries. So once this has had a bit of a chance to set, I'll give this another coat of bone dry or head cement just to make sure that those eyes are really stuck in place there. And this polish, it actually dries fairly quick. So when I'm tying these up, I'll do a batch. So I'll do uh, maybe half a dozen or a dozen and I'll do the heads all at once, just sort of an assembly line. There you go, there's the Black Death or one version of it. Have fun. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.